in this video we are going to learn animation Hi friends, I'm Maz Aftab from Easy Approach and in this video we are going to talk about animation. And if you remember that animation has two broad categories in Flutter, implicit animation and explicit animation. And we have already covered the implicit animation. So in this video we are going to talk about explicit animation. Explicit animation means animation with animation controller. You have to specify the animation controller. So it's opposite to implicit animation in which we don't have to specify the animation controller. But what does it mean to have animation controller? It means more control over the animation. As the animation controller controls the animation. So you can start the animation, you can stop the animation, you can repeat the animation, you can get the status of the animation like whether it is completed or not and you can do bunch of other things with the animation controller. And that's actually opposite to the implicit animation because as you know in the implicit animation we cannot start and stop the animation and we cannot repeat the animation. So now let's see some of the examples of explicit animation. The use of these widgets are actually the example of explicit animation because whenever you have to use these widgets you have to associate the controllers with it. So the first one is position transition. So it is actually used to change the position of the widget in an animated way and then we have a sized transition. It is actually to change the size of the of the widget in an animated way and then we have rotation and align and if you don't know how to use these widgets then don't worry because we are going to implement these widgets soon in the same video but the question is still when to use explicit animation so to determine this thing you gotta ask yourself some questions so the first question is is your animation repeatable and the second question is is your animation can be start and stop. So if any of the question gives you yes, then it's a time to implement explicit animation. So now we are going to implement explicit animation. Here I have blank screen of the application. There's absolutely nothing on it. And now first of all, I'm going to use rotation transition, which is as I told you already one of the examples of explicit animation. And it is used to rotate the object that we will give inside it as a child. So firstly, I'm going to remove this container and here I'm going to use rotation transition. And the first property that we need to define inside it is a child. That is the object we want to rotate. So here let's uh, make a container and let's give some height and width like 200 and 200 this and let's give some color. So let's give blue color. So this will be the object that will be rotating on the screen. And now we have to specify the point around which our object will rotate. So for defining this, we have a property alignment. So as I want the object to rotate on its center, so what I can do, I can write here alignment dot center. And now the very important thing is turns. So here we need to give the animation instance that uses animation controller and this is what makes it explicit animation. So we have to specify the animation object but before making the animation object I must tell you a fact that this rotation transition uses the range from 0 to 1 for rotating its shell where 0 means no rotation and 1 means a complete cycle that is 2 pi. So as this rotation transition will use 0, 1 and all the in between interpolated values for rotating the child in a complete cycle. So we gotta define the range of values for the animation. And for this we must use tween of double. So let's write the code for it. So first of all let's write tween and define the type of the values. And inside it let's, let's give the begin. So we got to start it from zero means no rotation and we have to go at one means maximum rotation or a complete cycle. But this is not what we have to give here because this tween object just defines how to interpolate 
between two values and if you hover over it you can see that we gotta give animation double but we are giving here tween double so for getting the animation object from the tween object what we can do we can use dot animate and inside it we gotta give the animation controller that we haven't made so far so for making the animation controller what i'm doing i'm going at the top and making here animation controller object and let's initialize it inside init state so let's write the animation controller and let's initialize it so we gotta use the animation controller constructor and now first of all we gotta define the duration that actually defines the time for the completion of one animation that is one rotation cycle so i want it to take uh, like uh, four seconds to complete one rotation and that's good now the second property that we need to define is vsync and here we gotta give the instance of ticker ticker is an object that calls some function on every frame so it is used by animation controller for managing animations. So for providing the ticker, what we normally do, we use single ticker state provider mixin. So what we can do, we can use here width. And then we can use single ticker provider state mixin. And now we can just give the reference of this state. And this is all what we need to do. And now as we have defined the animation controller, now we can use it inside the tween. So here it is. And the second thing is that we have just defined the animation controller and we have just defined the animation object in the turns. But we haven't started the animation because in explicit animation, you gotta start the animation explicitly. So for starting the animation, what we can do, we can use animation controller because this is what uh, we can use to control the animation and then we can either use forward or we can use repeat if you want to repeat it uh, in loop so what I'm doing I'm using here repeat so that is good now if I run the application so you can see the container is rotating so that's great and as we have used the animation controller and that's what make uh, it explicit animation now let's uh, add some start and stop features so that we can make some use of this animation controller so what I'm doing firstly I'm making a floating action button so that uh, inside the on press I can perform a start and stop thing oh sorry what's that first of all we have to we have to write floating action button And let's give anything and let's define the on press. So first of all, inside it we gotta we gotta verify or we gotta see if our animation is currently uh, in continuous state or if it is uh, a stop if it is in a stop state. So for doing it, what we can do, we can write animation controller dot is animating. So if it is animating so what we can do we can stop the animation so for stopping the animation you can use animation controller and then we have a stop else if it is already stopped then we can again repeat now let's uh, restart the application again so now you can see the floating action button and if i tap on it you can see now the animation is a stop and if I tap on it again now the animation is again a start so this is how you can use the animation controller for stopping and for resuming the animation so this is how you can stop and start the animation and as I told you this rotation transition uses the values from 0 to 1 to rotate and for every frame there's a unique in between value so let's try to get the current value from the animation controller. So what I'm doing, I'm first making a variable. 
so that we can use it for storing the current value of the animation. And let's initialize it inside the init state. And as the animation value is always changeable, so we gotta listen for all the changes in the value. So for this, we can register a listener. And inside it, we can call the set state. And inside the set state, we can set the current value. So to get the animation value, we can use dot value. And now we can use this current value to show it on the screen. So first of all, let's uh, wrap it inside uh, a column widget so that we can also place the text that will show the current value of the animation. And let's say uh, over the rotation transition, let's make a text widget that will show the current value. And for making it prominent, let's give some style as well. Like uh, I can just give the font size 30. Now, if I run the application again, So you can see the current value of the animation, but let's try to make it in center. So we can use a uh, main axis alignment and we can use center. Let's refresh it. Okay, so you can see the current value of the animation. Of the animation. So if I stop uh, at any instance here, so you can see it's uh, now 0 0.20. And it's always changeable. So zero being no rotation and one being a complete cycle. And let's uh, make a little space between these two so that we can see it properly. So now if I refresh it, now it should be more than this. Okay, so this is fine. And as you know, we use the animation curve with the implicit animation. And in the explicit animation, we can also make this ordinary animation a curve animation to make it more realistic. So for making it curve animation, what we can do, we can go at the top and we can make here the animation object. And that will be the curve animation. And inside the init state, we can define this. So for defining this, what we can do, we can use curve animation and we will use the constructor of curve animation. So inside it, first of all, we got to give the animation controller. So we can give this animation controller. And the second thing that we are going to give is the animation curve, any suitable curve for the animation. So I'm going to give the elastic out curve. Oh, we got to use here the curve animation. Now what we have to do instead of giving here the animation controller, now we can give here the curve animation. Okay, now let's run the application again. So now you can see the animation is looking more interesting, more realistic and it's looking more great. So this is how you can make your animation look more realistic by defining the animation curve to it. So you can choose uh, any suitable curve for your animation and then you can make it more realistic. So this is it. Now at the last, let's, uh, let's use another widget that is actually for explicit animation and that is called position transition. But for using the position transition, uh, we must need to use stack as a parent widget. So let's use stack widget and let's remove the center and all the things. And inside it, we will use the position transition. Here it is. 
So first of all, we got to define the child. We want to change the position of. So I'm just using a container and I'm making it a circular container to make it uh, look like a ball. So let's uh, give box decoration. And first of all, let's define a color inside it. Let's make it red. And to make it circular, we can use box shape dot circle. And let's give some height and width, say 100. Now similarly, like we use the tween of double object in rotation transition. Now in position transition, we gotta give the range of position in rectangular form. So we have a property inside it, which is rect. And now we gotta give here rect tween. So now let's first give the begin. So here we have to use relative rect from left to left, top, right, bottom. And this is how we can define the initial position of the, of the ball. And then we can define the end. And inside the end, we can for now just copy and paste the whole thing. And now let's define the beginning position of the ball. So you can think the whole screen is like a rectangle. So if I give here zero in the left and in the right, if I give here zero, so it means I want to align the object horizontally at the center. And now in the top, as I want to place the object initially right at the top, so what I can do, I can give here zero. And when the object will be at the very top, you can see the bottom displacement would be maximum. So what we can do, we can give here some maximum value like 700. And now at the end of the animation, I want to place the object from top to the very bottom, but at the center of horizontal axis. So what we can do, we can first give left and right zero. And now we can switch the value of top and bottom because the body, the ball will be right at the bottom. So we have to give now bottom zero, but we have to give the top to maximum distance. So now we got to use animate and inside it, we can just pass the curve animation. Oh, okay. We, we got to use here relative rect tween. So this is the current correct version. And because uh, we want to make it bouncy effect. So what we can do, we can use bounce out. So let's uh, run the application again. Okay, so now you can see the ball is bouncing down. It's actually coming down and it's, uh, it's kind of like showing a bouncy effect. So if, if I change a little in the left, like if I make it 200, so you can see it's coming right from the top and it's going to a little bit to the left or to the right actually. So, and we can stop and start the animation as well. So I think this is it from this video. Uh, in this video, we have discussed the explicit animation and we have uh, implemented uh, some of the examples of the explicit animation. Like we have covered the position transition and we have covered the rotation transition. So if you like the video, please give a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe my channel and please share the videos with those who want to learn Flutter with easy approach. So thank you for watching.